What is up guys? Joe Holland here. I am doing something a little bit different this trip. I'm actually headed south. We are heading down to the world famous Sebago Lake. Gonna do some lake trout tog fishing and also fish for my favorite fish to eat, the cusk or otherwise known as the burbot or Mariah, eel pout, lin cod. I don't even know what else they call them. They all taste incredible. So we'll be fishing for those mostly at night. Gonna meet up with my buddy Brandon, possibly some of his family too. Gonna spend a couple days down here on the water. First things first, gotta make a stop at one of my favorite ice fishing stores, Sebago Bait. Gonna pick up a new lower for my auger system that I'm going to try out a 10 inch auger on a hand drill. I'm going to try it without a gear reduction just like my good buddy Cameron ran when we were on Chamberlain Lake during the Chamberlain Lake series. So thanks Cameron for turning me on to this idea. We're going to see if it works and you guys will be the first to know on my channel. Sebago Lake, second largest lake in the state of Maine. By far the deepest is 316 foot deep. Average depth of 105 foot deep. It's 14 miles long, covers 45 square miles, and is a crystal clear, beautiful body of water. The last bunch of years, it's been sketchy with the ice. A lot of people fall through this lake. They get on it a little too early, and it hasn't frozen really well for a long time. It's always in question whether it's going to freeze at all, the big bay. It's home to the world record landlocked salmon, over 22 pounds. But that was caught probably a hundred years ago now. And since then the state has managed Sebago Lake into not a great salmon fishery anymore. And also not a great toke fishery. Not a good whitefish fishery anymore. They've pretty much bungled the management on it. Now there's no limit on togue, lake trout under 23 inches, and they want you to keep everything that you catch under 23 inches, and you're allowed one over 23 inches. They've also stocked it with L-wives, and the smelt population I think is hit or miss in here, whether it's taking a dive or not, which is a primary forage of the landlocked salmon. If you catch a landlocked salmon while ice fishing, you're not even allowed to lift it out of the ice. It must be released immediately. Same with brook trout. I've been hearing reports lately of guys seeing a lot of fish on the electronics, but having a hard time getting them to go, whereas there's just so much feed in the lake and they're on the l so hard that it's really hard to get them to bite a lure. Being fairly close to the Brunswick Naval Air Station, which is not operational anymore, the lake was used a lot for training military pilots on flying over water. Several planes were lost in Sebago Lake during World War II. A Grumman TBF Avenger from the Lewiston Navy Auxiliary Air Facility ditched and sank near Raymond on August 16th of 1943. Two low-flying British Vought Corsairs from Brunswick were lost after a mid-air collision over the lake in Raymond in 1944 and have never been found. And a third Corsair flew into the lake that same year. All right, guys, this is what I'm getting right here. This is what I call a Cameron special because he's the one who introduced me to it. He saw it on the internet somewhere first, but this is a 10 inch for a hand drill and it's light. It's made out of that plat type of plastic that doesn't break, I guess, or I hope, and it's got a good blade to it. Joe Hall, Hey, what's up, man? You sexy looking bastard. What's your name? I was just watching your videos last night. Dan Williams. Dan, you want to be on the next one? Uh, we'll go. Come on out to the ice shack, Bob. Where, Where are you? you? Uh, Lower Rang Pond, State Park. Yeah. Just did the derby two weeks ago with my, uh, Buddy's son, he came out, brought him out. It was his first fishing derby ever. How'd you guys do? Uh, he did good. He got like 10th place. He was able to pick a, pick a prize. He was excited. It was, nice. You know, so it was his first fishing derby. So nice. Got him right into it. Awesome. This is little Dan. This is big Dan. Yeah. Oh, this what's up, father. big Dan? Joe. Yeah. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Did you get it together? Oh, yeah. All right, so the, this is the pistol bit laser, which right. is also yeah, the ion. Yeah, we got another one of them, so I'm like, I'm going to get one too. Yeah, you should definitely get one. 
it's so easy. Well, it's nice that's that you're not rechucking all the right. time. So you just chuck this into your drill and you're done. Right, that's the problem I had yeah. with my K drill because it would fall off. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said I. I, I like yeah, when his uh, little man comes in, he's Gavin. Uh oh, yeah, that's why I said I get. All right. The truck is an absolute disaster. I'm literally just coming off my last trip, so the truck's just a complete mess disaster. Throw that in there. Make sure I closed everything. We're good there. We're good there. Sebago Bay, Wayne always takes good care of me. Now we get to head to the lake. We got one quick stop for gasoline. Then we're gonna head to the lake and shoot some good vids, I hope. Nice, made it. I'm here at the giant Lake Sebago. Let's roll, baby. I have a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Gonna take a little while to unload, get everything packed up, just cause I'm pretty scattered coming off that last trip. Literally just getting home late last night and getting on the road this morning and not really taking the time to unpack and get everything all cleaned up. So it's going to take me a minute to get everything loaded into the sled, get the sled out, figure out exactly where I'm going and what I'm doing. I'm going to meet up with my buddy Brandon and his family today and get set up for tonight. A little windy down here already. Holy cow, I got a mess back there. All right, gonna be a little while getting loaded up, but it'll be all right. She's ripping hard coming across there. For straight sideways. What's going on out here? Uh, what do we got? Friend home? Ten. I literally just got out of 40 inches of snow and slush. Yeah, no, no... And come down here and there was nothing. I was surprised. Oh, really? Wow. Fish on. Oh, no, I like the sound of that. What's up, man? Joel. Joe, nice, nice to meet you. you. Smells like fish in here. Yeah. Well, we had cast nuggets for lunch. Oh, you lucky. Oh, man, I tried to get here. I couldn't. We'll have them tomorrow, too, so. Beautiful. Small one? Yeah. How are they biting for you, Joel? Yeah. He's, had a, he's that, had a tough day. He's had a tough day. <laughs> Last Joel. couple days have been good, though. Man, this shack is awesome. Yeah, that's four, man. Holy cow. Just 
There's a fish. From the gold. Yeah. Number 12? Yep. Nice. Man, they're fat, aren't they? Okay. Found a good spot here behind Indian Island. It should block me from the wind. We got north, northwest for the next two days. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to get into the 20s blowing. So, going to get behind this big rock wall here and this island and, and set up. It's pretty glare, ice conditions out here. It's crazy night and day difference from what I was on yesterday up to Lobster Lake and Moosehead Lake with 40 inches of snow and anywhere from 6 to 10 inches of slush. So, great big difference there. But I'm going to set up right over here. It looks pretty good in this area. It'll look pretty with the background and uh, definitely be out of the wind. So that's the key. Let's get set up. I think this is the first time that I've ever done the winter ice camping where I took everything on one load. So I got a monster load there. I have stuff I definitely don't need. Well, I have stuff I definitely don't need, but I didn't really have a lot of time to get stuff together coming out of that. Other trip. just like that we are set up pretty quick this is what camp's gonna look like for this week table grill got some cooking stuff up there got a bunch of cooking stuff and various food in that tote a couple hannah foot bags there some water thawing out buddy heater going food dryer and extra tabletop got a milwaukee light there got another one over here there's my bed with a cot a foam pad and sleeping bag a couple hangers up here and various fishing stuff and electronics right there for now and that's about it it looks pretty darn beautiful out here got my flooring pack basket there and jig rods and probably won't need a shovel well you know what i think i'm going to drill a hole and take the slush from that hole and throw it over the apron of the tent so no wind can get underneath that i got it really tight about as tight as i've ever had it 
so I'm not too worried about it, but I might do that anyway. But pretty over here behind this island. Nice wind blocker. And I'm sure you guys are as curious to see how that 10 inch bit's gonna do on the Milwaukee drill. As curious as I am about it. So let's give it a rip. Yeah, she ripped. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say she's any quicker than the 8 inch, but she's not far behind it. That's the Ion G2 bottom on a Milwaukee drill. 12 amp battery. I don't know how much that matters, but... And then I got the Deep Freeze Quick Connect. And that sucker will rip. 10 inch hole on a drill. Alright, all set up. Pretty quick, pretty slick. Everything looks good. Heater's running gonna leave my totes behind and jump on the snowmobile grab a jig rod and see if I could get a bite before the end of the day with the boys before they head out of here for the night and then we're gonna be set up for tomorrow ready to roll she's pretty cold she's pretty windy it's always fun on this lake let's go what can I do to help Mike I think we're good okay we gotta lift that end up Okay, a little change of plans. It's pretty bad out there. That's that's a pretty tough group of guys. I've seen them in some rough weather and they've had enough for the day. They've been out here all day and there's only about two hours left of sunlight and that wind picked up a lot since I came in to set up. So you hear that ice? It's gonna be pretty loud sleeping tonight, making some serious ice and some ice ice quakes coming through tonight. So change of plans. Uh, I got oh Almost two hours before dark, I think. So I'm still going to get set up anyway for Cusk. I'm going to set five Cusk lines right now. Cusk are coming up in these gravelly, rocky areas with that full moon or just about full moon starting to spawn this time of year. So the big females are coming in. I'd like to, like to catch me one of them big ones to eat. So I'm going to cut up some dead bait. You know, usually put half a shiner down or... I got some, I guess I got some big suckers there too, and I'm gonna go get set up in the rocks for some cusk. All right, first things first, I gotta put my winter hat on and get out of my traveling shoes. I got my slippers still on from driving, but I thought I was done with these things for the year, but apparently not, because we got some pretty good glare ice conditions down here, but I'll, get, I'll show you a little trick that makes it easier and put these things on pretty sweet anytime any of the ice creepers that you guys use they go on a lot easier without your foot in there and and you can get them nice and snug and good proper fit on them if you put them on up here first and then put your foot in your boot just like normal but I started using these a little bit more religiously after after a pretty bad fall a couple of years ago I took a wicked header straight backwards, smashed the back of my head as bad. My buddy that was with me, him and his son, they were worried. I think it knocked me out, but I'm not 100% sure. It's lucky I had my um, sweatshirt, hooded sweatshirt on too, to protect my head a little bit or it would have been even worse. But that was a pretty bad one. So since then, I've tried to be a little bit better about wearing these things. Anytime there's glare ice, you could you know you can walk around like you're 90 years old, but you could also still fall, and that's what happened to me. So, so 
So there you go. If I get that on the right foot. Nope, that's on the wrong foot. <laughs> yeah, do it on your lap. <laughs> Mommy! That looks a little bit better. Alright. They definitely go on better when you get them on the right foot too. But I don't really like those little plastic or rubber ones that you got to pull super tight. They always seem to come off and they're pain in the neck and I, I wear a size 13 boots so I got a pretty good size foot on me so it's hard to find a decent pair of creepers that that fit my boot and works and is still pretty comfortable so I really like these it's a simple design as is most things that are made in Maine that's the stabilizers gravity is always working to try to bring you down it'll do it for the rest of your life it's been doing it since day one then you add a little slippery to it and I don't care how agile you are I don't care how much time you spend on the ice gravity's gonna win one of these times add some slip to it so that's why I wear those things and hopefully it'll save a broken arm broken shoulder broken head and what little brain cells I got left because that last fall I know I lost some brain cells on that one as you could see from me out here winter camping all the time all right I think I'm ready keep from losing these fish in the rocks or getting hung up or having to fight them for too far I tied a rubber band to the line and then I wrapped the rubber band on the reel just like that so I'm gonna let him fight I'm gonna let him run for about five feet or so and then he's gonna have to fight that rubber band if he breaks the rubber band we'll fight him after that but we're setting that right on bottom dead shiner That's about 12 feet of water. You can catch these cusk anywhere from 4 to 34 right now. They're starting to move into the shallows. She's getting chilly out here, folks. I got two set. I had to go back in the shack and take a break there I, I loaned my traps to some buddies up north and when they put the hooks back they decided to jam the hooks way deep into the nylon on the reel so I ended up having to cut most of the hooks out and then go way back in after the point that's two in we're gonna set I'll probably set five tonight for cuss and in Maine you gotta check them every hour that one's pretty shallow we're gonna set probably three shallow and two deeper three shallow and two deeper Pretty deep water here. I decided to go deep with it. Old time cuss fishing. I didn't have anything over 30 foot, so I wanted to get something out a little deeper. 
I'm glad I'm fishing right now. I love fishing. Oh, I like that quick connect already. We'll bring the drill. We'll bring the drill and the battery in. And the bit and the dead bait. We'll bring that in too. Throw that bait in there. Put that drill right there. All right, we are camping. My flooring is pine, so I do hate to wear my ice creepers in here because it marks it up pretty good, but it ain't a showroom floor. It's more like a dancing floor. So it is what it is. I don't mind too much, but we're all set up. I'm gonna unpack. You know, go through everything, unpack some groceries and some cooking stuff and some spices. Get camp all stowed away and ready for tonight. And then I'll go out and check the traps. Uh, at night, the law in Maine, I believe, is once an hour for cusk lines. I don't ever wait a full hour because I like to catch fish. And I figure if you got one on, you can't catch a second one. So I like to catch a lot of fish. So I check them a lot sooner than that, but... I got a short little roundabout here. I'll jump on the sled and check all five and bring you guys with me. Hopefully we get a flag and catch a cusk tonight. Probably not going to fish all night. But once I get dressed down is usually when I pull them. It's about time I'm ready for bed and dressed down. All right, first check time. It's only been about 25, 30 minutes, but I love catching fish. So let's go check, see if we get a flag up. Let's hope we do. Down. Oh for five. No flags yet, but that's all right. We still have hope. Not even sure if this is a good area, but we're fishing. We're fishing. That's the key. Would love to pop a giant cusk or any for that matter. Okay, guys, it is 740 at night and we're going to go out and do another check on the cusk. And after that, come in and probably cook up some dinner a little bit later than normal when I'm cusk fishing. Let's go. Not to the rubber. Oh yeah, it is to the rubber band. Okay. And there's nothing there. Dang it. He dropped it when he hit the rubber band. That's not what we're after. Whoa. Ha <laughs> ha. She's been cracking hard all day. Shoot, had one miss. Dang it, I hate a miss. It could have been possibly because I didn't give it enough rope to hang itself with that rubber band being only five foot of run. We'll keep trying it and if it does it again, we'll give them some longer rope. And if it does it again, we'll even get rid of the rubber band. 
but right now it's about time for some dinner. All right, dinner tonight's going to be some meat, some steak tips, some potatoes. We're going to saute up some mushrooms, an onion, and a cubanella pepper. Throw it all together in a pan, see how it comes out. Not bad. If there's room, yeah, there's some room. We'll throw some okra in there. There's always room for a little bit of okra. That'll cook down. Beautiful. We are looking good. Let's put some olive oil in there. She's still kind of frozen. All right, steak's on. Give it a couple flips, call her good. Hopefully it's a good one. Got some uh, Idahoan potatoes, some sour cream and chives. We'll drive a couple of them into me. Got some water going over here for some hot tea and for the potatoes. But it looks pretty good. Looks like it's gonna be a heck of a meal. I'm gonna hammer that, do another round of checking the traps, and then think about pulling them for the night after that. Once I get this food in my belly and start thinking about that bed, I don't know how long I'll last. Got a long day tomorrow. We're gonna do some cusp fishing tomorrow night on a much better spot with a lot less wind. Take a peek at it. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more. There's some wicked crackers going on out there. That's a nice plate of veggies right there. Mushrooms, pepper, and onions with some okra mixed in. Pretty damn good. On top of some steak. What could be better? It's pretty tender. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that'll fill the void tonight. She's bleeding a little bit. It's pretty hot. Well, that's cooling down a little bit. I'll tell you guys, I just came off a trip up north. Just got back last night, actually, and and uh, went home, showered, and tr charged some batteries and came right here. And normally I'll get home from a trip, I edit, upload, but I don't know if I got the footage to make a video, to be honest with you. It, was, it wasn't a failure of a trip because I had a great time and I had a great time with some, good, with some really great friends. But the fishing part of it, it just didn't work out. We, we were trying something tough. We went to Lobster Lake way up you know, northeast of Moosehead. And lobster's tough anyway, even though it's a blue ribbon trout fishery in the state. It's got some really hard regulations on it. 
and I guess it can be super slow. I never fished it before. We had a really hard time just getting into camp because there was like 39 to 44 inches of powdery snow. I was able to make a trail with my snowmobile. And then the next day we weren't able to make it into Lobster Lake that way. So we went to Moosehead and fished for a couple hours. Pat caught a couple tog. And then the next day we, we made it into Lobster. And it was a slushy mess. Had another group come fish near us. A big group of people that knew what they were doing. And they, I think they caught six real tiny 12-inch tog. We ended up just catching two 12-inch tog. And it was like really slow. And then... The next day we decided just to call off that part of the trip because we didn't have any live bait to go fish moosehead with. The slush was making it really hard for the older snowmobiles to get around in our group. And it was a good time, but I don't know. I don't know if I got a video or not, if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing or not. You know, whereas there wasn't really a lot of good fishing and it wasn't camping either. So I'll have to really look at the footage at the end of the year and see, or maybe if I, if I have a little downtime and see. But if that's something you guys think you'd still want to see, regardless of the fish catching and and um, regardless of not having any tent camp, and you know we were staying in a pretty old woods camp, then it, then it's something I'll I'll debate about putting it together for you, seeing if I can put together a good film on it. But sometimes you strike out. I mean, I don't go to the always to the best fishing lakes in the state of Maine and going to lobster is a challenge and I think it's it's a challenge that I'd love to take on but it's not a one day challenge where you you get out there and you you get out there an hour after light because of the travel ends real hard and you leave an hour or two early I think it's a, a place where you'd have to go spend a week and really jump around look for those fish and find them to be able to get one of those great big ones all right, dinner is put away. Right there. We're going to go make another check out there and see how it goes. Come back in and probably get down a layer and do one check after that. And that, that check be the one where we pick them up. Uh, this one's down. Nothing brewing on that check, so I think I'm going to get into some more comfortable clothing, do a little bit of reading, and do one more check. Pull them, pull them in a little bit. Get some sleep and then go at them a little harder tomorrow. All right, let's do a final check. It's 9.30 at night. Final check and pickup. I'm dressed a little light, so I won't mess around. That one is down. Uh... All right, let's go check. Let's, let's go check. Them. That one didn't make it to my rubber band. Huh. Oh. 
Well, had a couple flags, but no cusk for me tonight. Don't really know it's good cusk area or not, or I don't know, but didn't work out. It's pretty late. I'm pretty tired. A lot of driving the last two or three days, not a lot of sleep. So I'm looking really forward to climbing into that bed and cozying up and getting snug as a bug in a rug, which will be nice. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Had an awesome day. Uh, had a lot of fun over there at Sebago Bait. I spent a little bit more time there than I probably should have. I could have got fishing a little bit, but hey, seeing people and meeting people and and uh, talking ice fishing is always a lot of fun. So not a bad day when that happens. Looking forward to tomorrow. Going to get after it hard with the boys, especially with Brandon. And going to do some jigging for Togue in some seriously deep water. Holy cow, what a beautiful morning. Sitting on bottom. Oh, really? Yeah, there's another one down there. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. He, he hit that one on the chase. Yeah, he chased it up, didn't he? Yeah. Nice. Long go? Yeah, there you go. Had to break the ice. Got him. Nice. Ooh, that's got some weight jump. Big one. Yeah, that's a pretty one, one of them broad ones. I just caught one of my founder. Late trout. <laughs> 